Omaha Beach is one of the most famous acts of military planning and endeavor, and it stands amongst Gettysburg and Pearl Harbor as events that are embedded in the American psyche. In this video, I look at one man's actions and his experience on that day to paint a picture of what it was like. This soldier landed on Omaha Beach at H hour plus 65, over an hour after the first wave. It said his actions on that day inspired the opening scenes from the movie Saving Private Ryan. So let's look at Brigadier General Norman Dutch Cota. In this video, I'm going to walk the exact route taken by General Norman Dutch Cota on D-Day. I'll take you to the seawall where he sought cover, to the breach that he led his men through, and to the draw which is now named after him. But before we do, I want to thank the sponsor of this video. World of Warships is a free-to-play game and is available for PC. It is not just a game, however, it's a floating digital museum displaying breathtaking recreations of not just the most fearsome vessels of the First and Second World Wars, but also the blueprints and designs of ships that never even saw battle. These ships have been given a new lease of life in the game's virtual dockyards. If you want to experience the awesome firepower of the ships that bombarded the landing beaches on D-Day, then this is the game designed for you. Check the links in my video description, and during the registration, use the code WARSHIPS to get exclusive rewards including a bunch of doubloons, credits, premium account time, and a free ship after you complete 15 battles. Back to Omaha Beach, let's look at the ground in general. So Omaha Beach is a crescent-shaped stretch of sandy beach that's approximately 10 kilometers or 6 miles long. It was separated into sectors by the planners. We have Charlie, Dog Green, Dog White, Dog Red, Easy Green, Easy Red, Fox Green, and Fox Red. It had five natural exits from the beach, but as the enemy gets a vote, they place their defensive positions overlooking these exits. Let's look at the ground in detail. Here we can see Vida Stands Nest 70 and Vida Stands Nest 71. Vida Stands Nest 71 overlooks the D1 draw at Veerville. Our story takes place at Dog White Sector, where General Cota came ashore with elements of the second assault wave from the 1st, 2nd and 3rd battalions of the 116th Infantry Regiment. It's this stretch of shore and the cliffs above it that we are going to look at today. In this video, we're going to cover the exploits of one individual to try and paint a picture of what happened here. And it's someone who is incredibly inspiring, someone who's got a fantastic reputation as a military leader and commander. And that is General Norman Cota, arguably the oldest man to land on Omaha Beach, and certainly the, the highest ranking commander to land in the Initial waves, I think he landed about an hour after the first uh, landings. And we're going to cover his exploits that led to the exit off this beach from this location. And that draw there is named after him. Cota's draw, where he led American troops off the beach and up onto the bluffs. This aerial view shows perfectly the area where the first assault wave and now the second assault wave were pinned down against the sea wall. And it's here that we can do our first comparison with the movie Saving Private Ryan. Storm party! No armor has made it ashore. We've got no DD points on the beach. Dog one is not open. All right, so this is the seawall at Omaha Beach, and it's a lot different to the, the seawalls at Juno Beach and at Saw Beach. It's much more shallower. There's a really good then and now picture I can do to show just how the soldiers were pinned behind this seawall from the fire up on the bluffs that you can see. 
all the way there inland, which covered the stretch of this beach. Now, the important thing about Omaha is that, yes, it's a really uh, deadly beach for the US to assault and no one will ever take that away from them. And I definitely wouldn't, um, wouldn't try to do that myself. But the thing that you need to consider is that the very first waves were where the majority of the losses came from. There was actually portions of this beach that were assaulted where people did walk ashore. They came off their landing craft and they did manage to walk ashore without too much trouble. And there are absolutely strong points where people came ashore and they were cut down in scores, in, you know, dozens of them at a time. So Omaha Beach in its entirety is an incredibly deadly beach and it's a very special area for that reason. But it's equally true to say that some parts of the beach were not as heavily defended as others and it's the old adage that if you defend everywhere you defend nowhere and some parts were very lightly defended. But this section of the beach was not lightly defended. Companies A and E of the 1st Battalion and companies G and F of the 2nd Battalion were in the first assault wave that landed right here in front of WN70 and WN71. Their losses were terrible and again we can make a comparison with the movie Saving Private Ryan. Once the second assault wave had cleared the beach and reached the safety of the seawall, they then had to breach a wire obstacle to get onto the bluffs above them. You can see here this offset water course in the picture. It's at this location here where the US soldiers used Bangalore torpedoes to create an exit off the beach. And um, this looks like a, uh, a water course that's probably natural, but some people believe that actually this water course was created by Bangalore torpedoes that were used to create the exit off the beach. Bangalore! Bring up the Bangalore! Now, the soldiers who were here with General Norman Cota were inspired by him to get through the breach. And unfortunately, the first man who exited the beach and, and charged through that breach was actually shot by a German sniper, likely from the bluffs above. And it was General Norman who immediately sprung into action, realizing that his men needed uh, that motivation, that inspirational leadership to get through that gap. And so he charged through the breach himself, leading the way and his men followed on behind him. They progressed up this bluff through a re-entrant to what became known as Cota's Draw. So we're going to go and head that way right now. We've seen how they breached the wire obstacles to create an exit, and now we're going to look at the draw used to reach the German positions above them. This course was to become known as Cota's Draw. It was in this act that General Cota has become famously associated with the US Army Rangers. Kota asked soldiers who were pinned down by enemy fire near him, which unit do you belong to? Fifth Rangers, came back the reply. To which General Kota says, Rangers, show the way. Over time, this has evolved into Rangers, lead the way. And it's the motto used by the US Army Rangers to this day. Okay, so we've now made our way up the bluffs onto the high ground, which was overlooking the beaches where uh, General Norman Kota and the men who were pinned down at that sea wall we've just visited, that is where they were, they were stuck. And after they'd made that breach, Kota led the men up this draw, and this has become known as Kota's draw now. So let's go and take a look at this re-entrant. So a draw is essentially nothing more than a re-entrance. So a finger of land which is like a depression in the ground which leads up higher ground on either side. Uh, normally channeled out through water over, over time and the water erodes this channel. This does look slightly more deliberate. It looks like it's actually uh, slightly more man-made and um, this is the route that General Cota and the men took when they got off that beach. 
I'm going to show you the view looking back down to where they came from. And this is how they got up onto the bluffs. This is how they got into position to assault Vida Stans Nest 70, which was just over there. We're going to take a look at that in a second. Right, I'm stood now right in the center of uh, Kota's Draw at Omaha Beach. And it's in this position that they started to project the forces inland to get to the top of the bluffs and to try and assault Vida Stan's Nest 70. And they did this by flanking the position. So we're gonna walk up to the top of Kota's Draw and show you the defensive positions from up there. So I'm about halfway up Kota's Draw now and you can see down below me the position where we've just come from. So that is where General Norman Cota led the men off the beach by inspiring them to go through the breach that they created with those Bangalore torpedoes to assault this position and attain the high ground. As he said to them on the beach, gentlemen, we are being killed here on the beach. Let us go inland and be killed there. Up there, you can see the top of Cota's draw. And at one point, he got so far ahead of his men that apparently he was waiting for them, swinging his pistol from his finger, spinning it rather, like a, like a Western cowboy. Uh, but Kota was definitely not a cowboy. This man knew what leadership was all about, leading from the front. And he inspired his men to get off that beach where quite frankly, they were pinned down and they were being killed, as he said. It was his inspirational leadership, leading by example, that got them off the beach. And it's why General Cota is so revered today. A great leader. Right, this is the top of the position of Cota's draw. And you can see now that it starts to open up. And on that slightly elevated ground there was Vida Stans Nest 70. So let's go and take a look. WN-70 was a strong point overlooking the dog green and the dog white sectors. It had two casemates. One was not quite finished, but they housed 7.5 veal guns and they would fire along the beaches. It also had mortar to brooks at the rear of the position. At the forward edge were trenches where infantry would fire down onto those US soldiers. Okay, now it is really bright and it's probably massively overexposed. But I've got the wrong equipment with me. I've uh, been walking across fields to get here. And this is the route that Norman Cota would have taken to get up here. And the view back along Omaha Beach is just fantastic. Uh, we're of course now right on the bluffs overlooking Omaha Beach. And I'm not gonna get too close to the edge, but you can see that the edge is right there. And it's an interesting point about Saving Private Ryan, the, the movie. An absolutely iconic movie and one of my favourite war films, I think, of all time. But, you know, they had to remove the houses. That's one of the key points, is that the houses do not appear in the movie. But you can see, I'll go a little bit closer. You can see that there are houses along the front here. And the reason they removed them is because perhaps it just doesn't look quite so imposing if you've got you know, civilian housing down there. Uh, it looks much more imposing if you've got these great big concrete bunkers, which if I show you along the coast here, you can't actually see, you know, there are, there are none of those huge imposing bunkers. And they also used bunkers, which were those of the types from the inland gun batteries, and they put them right here on the coast because they look so menacing. No doubt about it. Great big beach that the Americans would have to cover to get to that seawall and then ultimately break through, create a breach and exit the beach through one of the drawers but it's just interesting to see this up close and personal and see that there aren't those, you know, great big defensive positions that we associate with Omaha Beach. But what a view and what a beautiful day to be here. Very lucky.
So after the US troops had been motivated to get off the beach and up the draws onto the bluffs, they started making their way both east and west to flank various German defensive positions. And we're now heading in a westerly direction towards the Veerville draw. And we're going this way because there's an amazing bunker that overlooks the Veerville draw. And I just want to show you exactly what the bunkers here look like. They didn't necessarily look like um, those imposing huge concrete structures that you see on Saving Private Ryan. We're now looking at WN71, which overlook Charlie and Dog Green sectors, as well as the D1 exit at Veerville. It had the mortar to Brooks at the rear of the position with their pre-designated targets, as well as machine gun positions at the front overlooking the beach. But what I really want to show you is the L-shaped concrete bunker that many people miss when they visit Omaha Beach. I'm now stood on the road at the D1 draw looking up at Widerstandsner 71 and here is the concealed concrete bunker covering this exit. Right, I've absolutely cut myself to pieces getting down here um, to find this bunker and hopefully you can see that okay with the light. But uh, I've found the entrance, I'm going to go inside and take a look at this bunker which overlooks the Veerville One Draw. I'm inside the bunker now, uh, one embrasure, in almost like an L-shaped, an L-shaped position really. So you've got one embrasure that looks straight out onto the road and the second one looks up the hill. This one's overgrown so I'll push my camera through and see if we can uh, have a look in there. It's pitch black in here unfortunately. Right, well we made it inside. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to go through this hole here. I'll give you a view. Hopefully you can see that okay. That should be a view of the Veerville draw through one of the embrasures. I'll do the same on the other one. If you can hear that noise, it's because I'm stood on a mattress inside here. And this is, again, the view up the vehicle draw, but this time looking more towards the approach routes from the beach there. Amazing. And the way out of here and the way in, not the easiest thing in the world. So let's make our way back out. So the way out of here is <laughs> a bit of fun. Pull myself out whilst holding my equipment. There we go. Wow, that was awesome. That was really cool. Hopefully, that gave you a view from an overgrown bunker here in Normandy. So, full disclosure, it's only through channels like you know, World War II TV and History Underground that I was able to find that location. Um, I challenge most people to find the entrance to that bunker without having seen it. Uh, first on their video so credit where credit's due excellent content from them and uh yeah what an experience to be able to go inside that that bunker or crawl inside that bunker to um to get a view from inside to see what those germans defending veerville would have seen on d-day brilliant absolutely awesome location from this location looking back up at the concrete bunker i want to give you some context for its purpose the large bunkers you see in Saving Private Ryan just wouldn't be practicable. They're easily seen and easily targeted. However, this bunker would have likely been undetected and may well have fired on US troops as they exited the beach just down there. This is genuine footage of soldiers and sailors who were attending a mass prior to the invasion and build up of fleet activity heading across the channel. Now what the men of the Allied nations achieved that day is nothing short of a military planning masterclass. Lots of things did not go to plan and at times, 
it looked as though the invasion might falter. But in reality, there was so much mass behind the Allies, and there was so much redundancy built into their plan, that I did not believe it was really at risk of ever actually failing. What is true, however, is the sheer bloody nature of the fighting experienced by the first and second assault waves. It was soldiers and leaders like General Norman Dutch Cota who inspired those soldiers to keep moving, to not give in, and to find the courage that they needed. What I didn't get to cover in this video was the way that General Cota cleared an exit for vehicles off this beach. This is because I want to save that story for another video when I look at Vida Stanzner 72. Remember, this was the opening phase of an invasion that would take days and weeks to consolidate. This was just the beginning. I want to thank World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Please check the link in my video description and during the registration use the code WARSHIPS to get exclusive rewards including a bunch of doubloons, credits, premium account time and a free ship after you complete 15 battles. Also, a shout out to Veterans in Action. Veterans in Action uses the outdoors, challenging events, expeditions and centre-based projects to help veterans rebuild their confidence, their self-esteem and their self-belief. What a brilliant charity. Please go and follow their link which I've put down in the video description. Thank you, until next time. A couple of people have asked about the Brenslinger top I'm wearing in some of these videos and they've asked where they can get their hands on it. Reaper17 is the store that I use, so visit their website which you can find in the description to get your hands on this top and others just like it. I don't really promote brands on this channel, but I make an exception for this brand. They are veteran owned and veteran operated. All the links you need are in the description below.